Hi, welcome back to Satoku Tech. Today we're going to be picking up where we left off with the M5 stack with the LoRa 868 module. We were using the LoRa receiver and LoRa sender example sketches in this previous video. Make sure to check that out so you see how to load the Arduino library for the M5 stack. But today we're going to add this GPS unit to the sender and see if we can't work through the GPS AT6558 example sketches to get GPS data sent to the LoRa receiver. You'll remember from this video that we had to overcome the fact that as the text was printed on the screen, it scrolled off the bottom of the screen and you couldn't follow it. So the first example sketch I went to was this M5 stack basics display sketch and it shows you that you can set the cursor position. So if we look at the LoRa receiver that I've modified here again, I've set the frequency correctly. And then in void loop, I'm setting the cursor at X equals 10 and Y equals 120. So that's going to kind of put it in the middle of the screen. And the text is just going to overwrite itself instead of scrolling off the bottom of the screen and not being able to see it past that point. So that was how we used the M5 stack basics display sketch to solve the first problem with the LoRa receiver sketch. So then we began working with the AT6558 example sketches for M5 stack. And that's down here. M5 stack unit GPS AT6558. And this is the full example. Now this full example uses the tiny GPS++ header file and this example has a very complex screen that looks like this, which is really great because it displays all of the capabilities of this AT6558 GPS device and all of the capabilities of tiny GPS. But it's more data than I really want if I'm just sending down information from my rocket and I want to know where my rocket is. You can see here we've got the satellite count, the H dot value, longitude, latitude, the location, age, I don't even know what that is, uh, date and time, altitude, course, speed, and then gives you the directions and the distance to London, England. So that's a lot more information than I really needed. What I want to know is how many satellites, so I know I have a valid signal. Longitude and latitude, of course, because I'm going to be looking for my rocket. We want date and time so we can correlate that with right now. And then I threw in altitude in case we get some sort of indication of how high the rocket flew. So I had to work through this rather long example sketch and trim it down to just the bare minimum needed so that I could Frankenstein in the LoRa sender sketch. The first thing, as you see here on this full example display, I have this error, no GPS data, check wiring. So I went to the M5 stack GitHub repository and posted an issue. Here you see I know that my GPS unit is working, but when I use full example INO, I get no GPS data check wiring. And you can see I need to know how to set TX21 port and RX22 port. So they were kind enough to reply within a matter of hours that instead of just saying SS begin GPS BOD, which was how they had defined the serial port for the GPS unit to include serial 8 and 1, define the RX pin and the TX pin. So let's look at that in our code here. There we go, serial eight and one, TX22, RX21. So that solved that, and thanks to the folks at the GitHub site, I went ahead and marked it closed and said thanks. When you consider it, LoRa is all about sending a packet. So begin packet, print hello, print the counter value, and end packet. That was the example payload from this example sketch LoRa sender. So I really wanted to get all that GPS data packed into a single string character that could be sent as one packet. And then it would be received by the receiver as one packet 
and displayed on the screen. So we had to overcome some issues with that. First of all, like I say, this full example program has an extensive amount of graphics and it's printing a lot of data on the screen. So I had to strip all that out. I also had to figure out where in the code it's obtaining the GPS data and that's where I would tap in and build up that string of GPS data to send out. So here's our void loop. And our void loop comes to the end here and calls the smart delay function. So I'm looking at smart delay here in the code and smart delay in the code says while software serial, which is the serial port defined for the GPS is available, encode this GPS variable with the data from reading the software serial port. Okay, so this is where it's actually populating all of the data that it's printing up here. GPS satellite, GPS HDOP, GPS location, and so on. So this is where we're going to tap into the code in this smart delay function. So I'm building from the modified full example sketch for the GPS unit and adding the LoRa sender sketch to it. So you see here, I've added the include for M5 LoRa. Here we are initializing the GPS. We initialize the M5 stack and begin the serial connection to the GPS unit. Here, we're going to initialize the screen on the M5 stack. And we're initializing the LoRa radio module here. Okay, I'm using my trick, setting the cursor location. This is where we're going to print out the packet, send the packet to the receiver. Here's where we call smart delay. This is where we get the GPS data in the smart delay function. Now here, this looks very crude. I played a little bit with building up this string based on a character variable type, but you can't add integers to a string variable that's defined using the character variable type. So I went with the string variable function for my string, which lets you add integers, float, etc., without any type of conversion. So you can see here, I'm adding a serial print line for each of these so that I could debug this program as I was working along. I build up hour, minute, and second with a colon in between the three digits there. Then I put a comma between the time and include the satellite count. So when it comes to this variable GPS location latitude, it actually has six decimal places, and I wanted to get all that information. But when you go to convert that float variable to string, you only get two decimal places. So I needed this D to string F function. So here I set the variable lat is gps.location.lat from the tiny GPS code. And I'm saying the minimum size is going to be five characters and give me six decimal places and create that in a variable named buff. And you can see I've defined character buff to 12 places. So I got all this worked out to where it shows both longitude and latitude with the six decimal places and adds it to the string variable str. So it took a little work figuring out how to concatenate integer and float values into a single string. Make sure to look for the links down below in the description of this video for more information. Then here we just finish out building out this string with latitude, longitude, and the altitude. And that of course comes back to void loop where it's getting sent. So all we have to look at now is the receiver. So you can see here in the LoRa receiver program, first of all, I've set the frequency, then I've gone on to set the cursor position, and then this way when it loops, it's going to put the cursor at the same spot, print the information that's received from LoRa sender with the GPS, and if you lose the signal from LoRa sender GPS, then it won't print anything. 
So you'll have the last known fix until you reestablish contact with the LoRa sender with GPS, and then it will resume printing in that same spot. So that overcomes the example sketch problem we had with LoRa receiver, where the data scrolled off the bottom of the page and you couldn't follow it. So we're going to check this out now and see how this is working for us. So here we are in the light box. And you can see I've got the two basic core units, two of the LoRa 868 modules installed. This is LoRa Sender with the GPS unit attached. And this is LoRa Receiver. So we're going to fire up the GPS unit, get a fix, and then we're going to fire up LoRa Receiver. I'll be right back. So I went outside to acquire the signal, and you can see here, I've got a GPS signal. We've got the time, nine satellites, latitude, longitude, and altitude. My battery ran out, so I've attached just a regular charger battery there. So you can see here, the receiver is getting the GPS data from the sender. We've got the time, nine satellites, latitude, longitude, and apparent altitude, as well as the signal strength. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed checking out these example sketches in the Arduino IDE for the M5 stack, the LoRa 868 board, and the AT6558 GPS unit. I've gone ahead and posted the code from these two sketches that I demonstrated here on my GitHub site. Again, look for the link down below in the description. And thank you very much. So... Make sure to check all the links in the description down below. Please subscribe. Check out some of these other videos. And thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shitoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.